and I'll turn it off. Or if, or if you start saying something you don't want. <laughs> All right. Uh, welcome to Teachers and Teachers. Nice to see you. We have a couple of people who haven't been here recently, and most of us know each other, though. So, um, Angela, do you want to start off by introducing yourself? Hi, um, I'm Angela Knight. I'm teaching first year writing and um, writing for teachers classes, both elementary and secondary. And so I'm here to learn more about the AI process because my first year writing students have already used it on me. So I need to get ahead of them. <laughs> used it on you. I like that. <laughs> Well, her essay on Angela Duxworth TED Talk on grit set used uh, particles of dirt every single time. So <laughs> instead of grit. Yes. <laughs> so it was a pretty easy catch. There you go. That's pretty fun. <laughs> All right. And Kristen. Sure. Uh, my name is okay. Kristen. Kristen, thank you for that correction. I teach 12th grade English now and just um the department is i've been watching you know on twitter the past few weeks the ai discussions and i would just rather roll with it than try to fight it so i figured um you know engaging my students um with it would be an interesting way to approach it so this happened to just come across my email and i thought you know cool 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 nikki i'm just gonna call on people Hi, Nikki Fain, Lehman College. Uh, I was here last week and I became a, a convert. Um, I think um, what I found it what I found really interesting was that a chat box became my critical friend. Yeah. By the way, you asked a question last week. Um, like it was something like, "Is this about computational thinking?" And I'm still thinking about that question, but I'm not. <laughs> I think it is, but I'm not sure. All right, uh, Christina. Uh, hi, I'm Christina Cantrell. I'm in Philadelphia. I work for the NWP, the National Writing Project. And um, I don't know, I was just saying I've been playing with new tools with Chris and Paul for, I don't know, 30 years almost. It's a little crazy. From, be <laughs> from before AI. <laughs> yeah, before AI. <laughs> so I figure I'd just like keep going down that route and see where we end up. Yeah, and I'm Chris Sloan, and I am a high school English and um, photography and media production teacher in Salt Lake City, Utah. Marina. Okay, it's my turn. Um, hi, I'm Marina I'm Lombardo. I teach third graders um, in Westchester, New York, and um, I've been kind of having a blast playing around with this and like creeped out and fascinated at the same time and um yeah just kind of want to see um even though my students are a little bit younger kind of see like what i can create and develop and play around with um that might be accessible for them too cool. okay did you see can i just say one thing please go ahead um new york i i'm New Jersey suddenly um, has media literacy education for all students, so K-12. So it's really interesting to think about this work, I think, with younger kids. Mm -hmm. And interesting to watch what they do over there, I think. Mm -hmm. Great. So um, has, has everybody had a chance to mess around with chat GPT? Uh, I don't know how to raise hands on this. How do we do this? If you have, if you scroll across your face here or your cursor, you could raise your hand. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Can you raise your hand? Yeah. Oh, there you go. Does that work? Oh, cursor. Okay. All right. And Angela, have you, or Kirsten, have you messed around with chat GPT? No, not yet, but I've seen the screenshots and following a lot of people who have, so I'm intrigued. Okay, okay cool. So if we, I, we're not, if it's okay, um, we won't go to chat GPT right away. Um, a, some, somebody online called this a, 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 like an older sibling. <laughs> There's um, uh, on OpenAI, 
also has a playground. And the playground has an um, API, and I'll, I'll say this really fast, but then we'll show what it is. Um, has a playground where you can do almost the same thing as you could do in chat GPT. Um, but you can't do the dialoguing. Well, I'll, I'll make that clear. Um, so there is something else to do after this experience tonight that, you know, or maybe we'll get to that too. Um, but what we've been able to do is there's a plug-in on our site, Youth Voices, where we've been able to um, bring the playground right next to a student's piece of writing. And Chris has actually messed around with that a little bit. Chris, do you want to introduce so people will show these a little bit later? But yeah. what, what, have, what have you been doing yeah, so, in the last uh, two days, actually? So this is fresh. Yeah. <laughs> right. So um, I, uh, a typical assignment I have my students do is to summarize an article um, and then try to, um, pr you know, write persuasively from it or just to do expository writing. But whatever it's, you know, I could summarize this thing. And so what we did yesterday was I had them summarize as a regular English assignment, um, summarize what you think are the most significant stories from 2022. And then we went into youth voices into the, um, and by the way, Chris, the, the, the smattering that I've seen so far, Taylor Swift, Ukrainian war. <laughs> like, yeah. It's like, they're all over the place, but. You know, oh yes. yeah. Yeah. Just, um, uh, Spotify. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So then they, um, I had them paste in their summary and then I had them, paste in into AI the article text and hit you know generate a summary and they did that for two articles and then they compared their summary with AI's summary and then reflected on the differences and you know the affordances and constraints maybe um, of that so I just think you know when you think about it there's I think uh, that might be a, a, you know a legitimate use of AI um, because practically speaking in the past when kids would, you know, like there's 25 of them, if they summarize all those articles, that means really I'm going to read 25 articles and check that people are um, accurately summarizing something. So, um, you know, if you run an inquiry class, classroom, that runs, that's a lot of stuff all of a sudden. So I think of it as a way for them to kind of check their own understanding and what's different about the AI's summary with with their own. So I thought like, okay, that seems legitimate, like a legitimate use of that. So you you could explain to your neighbor teacher that somebody um, said this to me um, that there's no way he could ever do any of this because the teachers around him would say he's helping them cheat. So he doesn't think he is, but even that it gives that impression is interesting, right? So anyway, yeah, you, you can I, explain to those teachers more, what you're doing. Yeah. What? yeah, in a more general sense, though, I think what I'm seeing, one use of AI is to use it as, like Nikki mentioned, kind of a thinking partner. Um, so, you know, if I generate something first, then do something in AI and then compare those things. I think that's a decent way to think about writing. So let's do that, okay? Um, I, I'm, I'm going to kind of be a workshop leader here, if you don't mind. Um, there are pathways. One of the pathways here to the right um, leads you to the deeper dive um, on this NWP studio. Um, you can go look there later. Go up to the left. Follow me over here to the left on this path. Yeah. Okay. And you'll notice it gets quiet out here. Okay. Okay. Um, great, great, great. Come on up here and pop into that room. Thank you. Okay. Um, try not to get on top of the words here because we want people to read them. And well, do you think it makes yeah. sense real fast to just look so, at one of these examples that, that, I mean, I'm happy to share one um, of the examples of what the kids did. If you do, we can go there. I was going to wait till later so oh, after okay. our own experience, That's fine. That's fine. but we will get there. I promise. Okay. Yep. I mean, no, 
But I'll go with your lead on that. You want to do that? I'm just looking at um, oh, go what ahead. they did. It looks kind of interesting. Okay, yeah, that's fair to do. You're going to share? Yeah, sorry. Um, it's under... I just looked at the top three that were... Posted. So if you go to the Spotify one. That's... Spotify one, okay. There are four right on the front page mm -hmm. at this point. Oh, Chris, you want, maybe you, you should want me do. To I do don't it? know. Oh, mis hand, they ha misinformation on Spotify? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, Christina's doing that. There you go. There we go. Perfect. Um, and just, just to say, if you're new here on Kuma Space, um, you can move this screen around. You can make it bigger or smaller. You can make it full screen if you like. Lots of things you can do. <clears throat> and this is um, this is. Um, I guess I guess was gonna also show if you're new to Youth Voices, like. No. <laughs> um, this is post. This is a site where youth post their work. Mm -hmm. So okay, Chris, you wanna. So yeah, so um, the structure is to, uh, first of all, that's an AI generated artwork there. I was wondering about that. Cool. To do something, uh, something about, you know, bar, uh, the staff, the music staff in the style of Leonardo, Leonardo da Vinci. So that's where she's coming out. <laughs> that. Wow. And um, so then you've got some, um, there, those are the articles. Then this is Pilar's summary in blue. Uh, and she summarized two different articles um, because, you know, she understood it to be two most important stories or significant, right? So that's the blue. And then if you go, then she generated, she put the text of those articles into AI, generated those things, which is... Oh, see. right. Huh. And then below that yeah, and she copied and pasted. Yeah, then that, that's AI copy and This is what the AI said. Yeah. Back into her post. And then the comparisons, I think, is kind of interesting. If you look at um, the first thing, for example, we asked him, do you detect any bias? And she said, the AI summary doesn't seem to hold too much bias. But I did notice that in both articles, it found outside information and used that to focus more heavily on why this is happening and the repercussions. Like in the BU article, they mentioned how media outlets are reacting to the situation. Hmm. Um, and, you know, and at B, you know, after comparing my viewpoint to AI's viewpoint, I noticed mine went more into the feelings of people. I mentioned the viewpoint of the author in the BU article while writing how he thought the situation would be handled with no bias, right? So I think you're seeing a kid reflect on the differences between those two yeah. summaries. And, and I think that's a, a good way for her to be thinking about the topic, too, not only just like the differences. Yeah, it's interesting. And then she asks questions, right? Which I think is important too. Mm. I don't know yeah. if she, yeah. At the bottom there, she wants to know, what else do you want to know? I want to know how much money was involved in all, in the Spotify decisions and mm -hmm. what really influenced. Well, I guess in the Harry and Meghan thing too, talking about money. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what we did yesterday. So we so can, Chris, yeah, go question. ahead. Thoughts about this? Chris, what were yeah. your other questions besides bias? The other questions were, um, we could, we could show them, Christine. Yeah. If you go under guides <laughs> on the top. Yeah, I'm here. The top of what? Oh, a top of youth voices. There's a guides menu there. Um, I don't know where that menu oh, is. Oh, did you go there, Christina? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I it's forgot okay. that it's only sharing this one tab. Oh, okay, that's now right. I, okay. You can see it now. So I'm at, you see how the student's work is here, and now I'm going up to the yellow, and there's guides here. Mm -hmm. There's like a pull-down menu. So where do I go, Paul? Uh, go to um, nonfiction text response, which this is, right? Yes, it is. Oh, sorry. And somewhere toward the middle, it says AI. Yeah, compare your, compare your summary. Yep. 
Okay, so share this tab instead. Okay, now you can see this. Good job. Compare your summary. <laughs> yep. Yeah, right. So this is a screenshot of what it looks like. The AI is over there on the right side, and that's the summary that's pulled in. And then you can see the questions there, or you can scroll down and you'll see them again. But, yeah. and this, so this is the example. That you gave them this example, Chris? Um, I or, put that on my assignment as a resource if they needed it. So okay. then you, those are the questions, though. That was... Um, so what biases seem evident? What I notice about my viewpoint compared? What questions do I have about the original? What questions for further research do I have? Yeah. Cool. Thanks. I um, thought that was helpful just to see. Absolutely. Um, any other thoughts or questions at this point about that for Chris? All right. Um, Chris, did they pick their own articles? Yeah. Um, we haven't talked too much about where to find your information. Uh, so it was, um, you know, wherever they get their news was where they are right now. Okay. Yeah, I mean, some were picking BBC, CNN, that kind of thing. Others mm -hmm. were going, yeah. Yeah, their news feeds are pretty varied. I mean, I, I noticed one, for example, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It's, it's, so that's where they are. They're just picking from where without much critical thought. Yeah, we haven't looked at databases and, you know, yeah. Cool. All right, should we try this? Um, yes. I mean, I could just give an example, but I, I really think it, it's better and you can give yeah. us feedback on how this works. Um, there is a, a box right there, and if you, you see the yellow post it says click here to write. If you are logged into Youth Voices and you click there, you'll go to a create a doc. Um, if you want to write somewhere else, that's okay, and you and I can kind of figure out how this will work for you. Um, eventually, we want you to actually start making a post on Youth Voices so you can see how this whole process works. So let me know if you were able to create a doc. Um, let's. And what I want to say is uh, you could, should write about anything that's on your mind right now. Um, maybe not about AI, maybe about something else. But if you want to write, it doesn't matter. You could write about AI. Okay, does that sound fair? Um, and just to think about Peter Elbow's words here that Christina and I are blocking. Um, you might oh. want to read those. And just so you know, if you come back here to use this space, which you can do, um, if you click on that quote, it'll take you to the article where, or the chapter of a book where he wrote about this. Um, so, so, sort of the theory and practice are merging here. So, you're writing, let's, let's give it five minutes, let's say. So, at nine, let's give it seven minutes. At 9.35, we will get back together and you will have something written digitally. And hopefully Paul, in a doc. We're, we're yes. not you're not expecting us to summarize anything you want no us no to i want you no oh sorry we are doing something different than what chris did okay thank okay. you yep good good clarify and and specifically what we're doing is um what would happen if you took a journal entry a quick piece of writing put gave that to ai in, in lots of different ways that peter elbow has suggested and see what comes out of that okay so we're just doing a quick first write about any topic that you'd like to write about. Can I upload an image to this or I can't? Later you can. <laughs> okay. To what? To a doc? Yeah, you can. You could, um, uh, you copy the image and you paste it. Really? Huh? It's, on, it's an online image. Yep. It's not. Yeah. I don't. It has to be online. For the... Okay. Angela, Angela, come come up here with me so we're out of their ear space. Go up a little okay. bit. Yeah. Very good. Good. Hi. Hi. I don't know my password because you said oh, my yeah. account. Um, it is AI. Mojo, M O J O, A I M O J O. Sorry, it has to be long. And then, and then it's Youth Voices, and 
one, two, three. Should I say it again, or do you have it? Um, I'm going back to the logins. I can put it in the um, chat. Because I tried to create an account and said I had one. Okay. So is it? Are there any caps? No. Okay. I'm putting it in the chat if that helps or not. AI Mojo Youth Voices. That's right. One, two, three. Okay, that's the part I forgot. One, two, three. Okay. Did that work? Uh, no, do I need working. my full email address? No. Wait for your your username is either your email address or it's your first and last name jammed together as one word. AI Mojo Youth Voices 123. Sorry about this. I hope I didn't make a mistake. I was doing it fast. Okay, I'm in. Great. Good to know. Okay. Okay. And do now, you see do you see where to create a doc? Um, under there's a there's a, a tab for create. You hover over the word the create, and then you go down to notebook, writer's notebook, which is also doc. Uh, yes, I'm in there. Okay, that's where you can compose, and you got to save it at the end. Okay. I'm gonna. You're good. So I'm creating something original that I'm gonna run through AI here. That's right. Okay. Thank you. Just want to say that um, you this nothing uh, docs does not save automatically, um, so you can go down once in a while and hit save and continue, and or you can you know and you you also need a title eventually. Just uh, mention all that. Kirsten, are you into your voices yet? Yeah, I'm in. Okay. I'm actually. Right now, I'm talking on my phone, but I'm in Youth Voices on my laptop on a dock. Okay. Yep. Good, good. I just want to make sure you have Another minute. <laughs> so whatever last thoughts you want in that 60 seconds. Where do you press save? Way at the bottom. It's a blue bar. I, I don't know if it says save or... Oh, look. Do you, did blue you find bar. it? Here? Blue bar way at the bottom of... Of your dog. Oh, there. Found it. Okay.
So as you're finishing up, quick question, Chris. When I scroll across this yellow post and it gets big for me, does it get big for you too or not? Nothing's getting big right now? Uh, when you're... Nothing's getting big for me. Okay, right good. Now. Good to know. Okay, I didn't know how that works. Okay. That makes sense. Okay, um, what we're going to do now, um, I could either demonstrate... Uh, what I'm going to do is... So follow out this path here. We're on number two now, right? Angela, are you with us? Kirsten, are you with us? Marina? <laughs> yep. Okay, okay. So make sure you've saved your work. So the first thing here, if you scroll across, um, if you um, hover across the little post-it there beside this highlighted text right above my head, um, it'll say highlight and copy the text from your UV dark, YV dark. Okay. After you do that, you're going to open up a create a discussion post. You're going to paste it. I'm saying this fast. And we'll go back. And then we're going to play with with um, AI Mojo, okay? So, how, you, where do they find how to create a discussion post? Um, it's in. So what you do is you you hover across the word create, and you find discussion posts, and you click on that. And if you highlight, if you scroll across the post-it note there, the sticky note, it'll say hover over create and click discussion post. And then you paste it in and you have to give it a title again. I can demonstrate this. Is that a useful thing to do? Here, can I, wait, where do I paste? Hello. Oh, oh wait, hello. <laughs> Chris and I were talking and we didn't know you didn't follow us. Sorry, sorry. Hi, all. Um, yeah, f please follow us out into the out into the path out to the right. There we go. And now you need to stay close to me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, all right. So each of these, Nikki, yeah, stay close. Okay. So each of these each of these um, objects, uh, these images has a little post-it note next to them that says what to do. Um, I will demonstrate it for you, but you could just do it here yourself. Uh, does that sound okay? Yeah, why don't you demonstrate? Yes. Demonstrate? Okay, thanks. So I'm going to present my window. You're going to see everything here for a minute. That's okay. Let me move this away. Okay, so here's my post, right? Here's my um, doc. I'm going to highlight everything and copy it. I'm not sure I'm seeing your post yet. No. Okay. Good to know. <laughs> Paul, we're seeing a screen on, on screen on screen. Okay. Got it. Thank you. I will go find where that is and fix it. Yeah, because I'm using... I don't know. Never mind. I don't even know why. Uh, okay. Present. Christina, you're better at this than I am. Screen. Screen? No, window. Yes, window. There we go. Or Chrome tab, even. Yeah, but I'm, I'm using the download, so I'm not... Okay. It's even different than that. Okay, there is we it, go. it's there now? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so I wrote about sleep. Secrets of happiness, right? Sleep is in... But I wrote this a while ago. But, uh, so there's my doc. I'm copying it. Right. Then I'm going over to create. I'm hovering over the word create and I'm going to discussion post. Did everyone see that? Mm -hmm. Should I go mm -hmm. slower or is that good? It does take a minute to, to arrive. Um, and then where it says type forward slash to choose a block, you click there and you paste. Okay. All right. And then you need to add a title at some point.
Just so you know, this does save automatically, but um, if you want to hit save draft once in a while, you can. Okay. So, Paul, what we're doing is we're, just to clarify, we're going from a document so, that we drafted in to a blog post on WordPress, right? Right. And so what I'm imagining is kids keep a journal, right? They keep a, a, a notebook. Um, and you say, okay, you've been keeping a notebook about this issue or whatever for a few days. Um, pick one of your entries, right, and copy it into a discussion post. Is that clear? Yep. What we're doing here. Okay. Um, now, and hopefully you're doing this on your own, um, but um, let me know if there's an issue. In the upper right-hand corner, and this is what's sort of new for all of us, um, is... AI Mojo, and you're going to click that on, and it's going to come on like that. AI Mojo. It is looks like where? a game controller in the upper right hand corner. Oh, yeah. Cool. Okay, now, if you've already, um, and I actually recommend, I think, going out and messing around on the playground maybe before or after this, whatever. But it, but I do think it's useful to have it here too, and we'll kind of show why. Um, on the playground itself, so there are some tabs I'll just quickly introduce. There's the playground tab, there's a templates tab, there's a results tab, there's a wizard tab, I don't know what that's about, there's a notes tab, and there's a dolly E where you can make images, right? So we want to click on the templates tab so if you haven't done that yet do that please and what i've done is i've created i've actually to so how do i explain this sorry so on the playground if you're on the playground what you have to do at the top is you have to engineer and get really good at making um making prompts to the AI to give you back what you want, right? Um, but what this plugin allows you to do is that teachers can create their own templates, right, for students. So what I've done is I've, if you click on select, we've, uh, just to give you an idea of some of the templates we're working on, um, you know, can, if you could take some text and ask it to align to the United Nations SDGs, right? Which which questions fit this text? That's one of the things. Give me burning questions. Give me wicked problems behind the text. So those are some of the inquiry things. We're working now with loops here. So scroll down to find loops. And I'm going to give you as an example the facts, errors, and lies. This is something, again, I used for the description of what are errors, what are lies. I used Peter Albo's actual language on the template. <laughs> um, so if you click on that one first, if you're not following me, yell. <laughs> Slow down. I have no idea where you are. Okay. Good. Good. To um, yeah. I know where you are. I guess I'm not sure where you're going with this. So I feel like. Should I keep going and then go back? No. Yes. So can, can you watch me for a minute and then we'll go back? Does that make sense? Yeah, we'll just watch you. Okay. Okay. So I'm go I've picked this template. It's Does Angela it's, know where to watch? I don't know how you got there. Yeah, okay, that's I was looking for the thing on mine and I couldn't find it. Okay. Um so Angela, tell me where you are. Did you get your text pasted into this like this? Um Yes, but it doesn't look like that. So maybe I put it in the wrong spot. Hmm. We well, could... what if we watch Paul go through? Because I just don't know where you're going, Paul. So I'm a little. Okay. And and then we go back to do the do it how to again. Does okay. But it does. Uh, let me just redo this one little piece then. Um, Angela? Yes. Uh, you, do you see on your, maybe delete where you put it? Do you see where it says type a forward slash and then to choose a block? 
No, mine doesn't say that. Okay. Are you in create a discussion post? I was in. So, um, I went to create. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then there's discussion post right underneath that? No, I went to new doc. Okay. Is that why I'm confused? Yeah, yes. go to try to go to create. discussion post now. See if that works better. Okay. Thank you for your patience <laughs> and for speaking up. And then it says, "Okay, now I'm in podcast episode details." I think I clicked the wrong thing. No, you're good. Huh? It's the space right above that that says. Type page. choose the block. Yep. Okay. And then that's where I paste my text again. Yes, mm -hmm. right. Okay. And just to say, a, a teacher's look on that page is more complicated than a student's is. Just so, just so they don't see that podcast here. Okay. And You're then, good. And then you want to give it a title at some point. Uh, yeah, I just called it sample text. Okay. And then where do I? And then I have to save it somewhere. No. Uh, you can. Every once in a while, there's a save draft. Okay. There's, um, and then what we're opening up is on the side, a in a margin on the side, in a right sidebar, there's AI Mojo, which looks like a game controller. Yep, and now I found it. Okay, thank you. Now I'm caught up. Great. Um, should I keep going? Yep. Yes. Now, so we're picking the second second tab over we're picking templates and again we can go back and talk about templates another time um we're i've created one two three four four or five four templates here right um the one that's kind of the most unusual is facts errors and lies so let's play with that one you click on that it comes into the select a template box okay um there are there is an example here uh again these are right out of peter's text examples of errors lies what are errors what are lies if you want to play with that you don't have to sorry let's if you click on the bottom the bottom block which is the last paragraph you'll notice that mine's open now if you want to highlight it you can just so you can see it and then there is a tiny plus button right above the text box to the right. You click on that and then it gives you insert everything from the top until the selected box. That then selects all of your text here. Let me slow down and check. Everyone good with yeah. that? Run, run that one, uh, run those, I, that routine I by me again. You did, but why are you doing it? Okay. Because I want it to give me a list of five facts, five errors, and five lies about my text. Right? <laughs> and why okay. did you not? And just so say, I highlight why did you the last paragraph, out the, the last line. Then I like. Why did you go to that last paragraph of your text? Go ahead. You don't have Next. to do it that way. You can either highlight everything. Okay. You can either and and paste it in. That's probably okay. the easiest thing to do. Okay. Oh, I see. You want to get all of your text in there, but there's. You were just, just pointing to that text to say add okay. that. That's right. Okay. Sorry. No, no, it's good. I thought you were like doing something with the last paragraph. Got it. Okay. Copy. No. One of the options is to select everything above the paragraph you're on. Mm -hmm. So that it doesn't matter. You could either copy and paste, and by the way, you could copy and paste like Chris does on his assignment. They copy a an article on the internet and paste it in this text box. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then hit generate. Which is Takes the plus, is that the plus sign? No, that's the, down at the bottom is a blue generate button. All okay. the buttons are blue and at the bottom today. <laughs> okay. So this is a WordPress plugin that that's pulling in the yeah. playground. 
And by the way, kajing kajing, um, and so I need funding. <laughs> it's on my account. Um, so here, here, here are the sort of policy issues. I don't like the fact that kids would have to like use their phones to sign up for an, an, an account on OpenAI, right? And or that they're having to sign up on OpenAI. And they don't, anyway, and eventually they're going to be charging. So, so this, and it's blocked, right? So those three things are solved with this. Um, they don't have to sign up. They can just use it right here on Youth Voices. It's, it's so far avoiding all the blocks, um, internet blocks, in, at least in New York City. In New York City, yeah. Yeah. Well, here too, when I tested it. Oh, really? Because, okay. oh, okay. yeah, our filters had blocked chat GPT, but not this. Yeah. And then, and then the tricky thing, it, it sounds bad now, but eventually when all of this stuff goes for pay, we're going to have to start paying. Um, we are already starting to pay. It keeps track of every, every word that gets put up here and it charges my account, right? Which isn't that big a deal. It's, it's so far costing like $5 a week. But just to keep that in mind that those, that's an issue that worth thinking about. Um, and it's a value proposition, right? Is this a technology that you want to pay for? Eventually, we're going to have to. Um, Paul, but, question. But, but question too much about yeah. Go ahead, yeah. what's uh -huh. generated. So um, it says facts, OK? Yep. It picks out what it thinks are the facts from my entry. It right. picks out errors from my what it thinks Who are, you mean, talking to? are mistakes in I my entry. I can't hear either. Wait, wait, wait. Um, Nikki, can you move? They can't hear you. They can hear. Where's Nikki? Oh, I guess I have to go over there. Nikki's on the edge of the bubble, I think. Okay. Yeah. Here, here. I know what I can do. I can, I can change this so we can hear each other all over the place. Okay. Uh, four. Sorry. Uh, quiet. Let's go down to half yeah. Okay, now we can hear each other if I save it. Okay, now we can all hear each other. Okay. Go ahead, Nikki, ask your question again. So I'm looking and I see what it's generated is some facts that they they're pulling from what I said. Then they then there is that category of errors. Right. Some of the error are exactly the same as the facts. Okay. Um are I guess what I'm saying is, how, how are they categorizing facts, errors, and lies? Again, um, it depends on what prompt you give it, and what the prompt. And this is not necessarily perfect yet, obviously. And, and it's one of the things we can do here. On, sorry. So the template I put in the template, Peter Elbow's actual description of what is an error, and I'm I'm paraphrasing here, but it's something like. An error is something you think might be true, is it maybe isn't true, but you hear people saying all the time, but you think it's not really true, right? It's sort of a prejudice you might have, although that word is loaded, right? And then lies are things you know are not true, and facts are things that everybody thinks are true. Okay. So it's, again, I'm again, going to come back at you again to ask that question of, the lies have very little to do, I think, right. with what I said. Right. So in our experience and based on Peter Elba's work, having kids do these lists like this as they're writing something is a really good thing to help them start to think about revising their writing. So that's the idea here. But the lies aren't in my writing, so how do they how does that become but part they of may, the revision. That's again, fascinating. What? That the lies aren't in your revision. Like they're not in your writing. No, what's happened is they they, you know, I wrote something about Marjorie Taylor Green. They picked up on the fact that I picked I I mentioned her. The lie is that she's a superhero. Nothing <laughs> in what I said indicated <laughs> Right, but they're getting that from somewhere else. Yeah. Like out in the AI world. Or yeah. Out in so, the, yeah. They're not, there's nothing here for me to revise. Um, based well, but, on 
But, but that thinking about her as a superhero oh, see, gives me ideas so that I could that I could go back to my writing and say she ain't no superhero, right? I mean, I think you can imagine there are ways you could use the lies to help you think. Yeah, Not I'm, what I'm saying is the paste, lies yeah. don't seem to relate to what I'm thinking. There are lies that seem to come out of you know the blogosphere somewhere, right? Right. So that was the most iffy template. Should we try okay. another one? <laughs> um, here's how you do it. You go back to templates again. Okay. All right. I'm not being um, testy. I'm just trying to figure this out. No, it's fine. No, I, I, and, and at some point you would say, I would say to a, a student writer, that's great. This is just an experiment. The lies section didn't help you. Let's move on to something else. Right? Okay, but, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. The Sorry, somebody else. Go ahead. Dan. The interesting thing about that template is I wrote like, kind of a personal narrative, right? And it was included mentioned of Grammarly. And one uh -huh. of the errors says Grammarly can help students with their writing, but it said that's an error. <laughs> what I'm looking at with those errors is it would also be an interesting, you know, how to find a counter argument almost too. Like are any of yeah. those counter arguments that you're gonna need to address because some of my colleagues think Grammarly isn't gonna help you with your grammar. It's gonna make it worse. So I don't know, just another thought. Yeah, it's really helpful. Yeah. Anybody else? Yeah. Find well, something? I guess um, just talking about looking at the templates more generally. Um, one of the things that I try to teach kids is, um, you know, think about varying your opening, the article hooks. And I think that article hooks template is is worth doing after you talk about different kinds of ways we engage writers. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I was just playing around with some of the um, templates that I think are kind of interesting down below there too. Shall we try that or what do you want to do? Yeah, article hooks. I well, mean, it, okay. So yeah. go to turn on templates. Um, so I just paste it in my whole piece of writing and hit article yeah. hooks. Right. And then and go down and find article hooks. See what happens. Different ways to get your writing in there. You can use the plus sign or you can do what Chris did, just copy and paste. You can also just get one paragraph in here, right? Um, that's a revision process that is another time we could talk. Well, <laughs> where's the article hooks? Why am I missing that one? Is Sorry. It way, is it way you, down? You, you turn on templates. Yeah, I got that. In the, in the box, you click and then there's a drop down. Yeah. It's way down under B. Okay. This is these are this this is what's in the template in the uh, plugin itself. Okay. So yeah, the try article hooks. Ah, I got it. Yeah. Article hooks. Good. Thank you. Quick example of. Oh, sorry. As you're, is it okay to do three things at once? As you, um, one of the things I've learned in using the playground is that. If you tell the um, GP3, GPT3, if you tell it to avoid using passive voice, it comes up with more interesting text, right? But I don't know how long we want kids to kind of just mess around and figure that out. So I've actually, in the templates, I've added that sentence um, on all the templates so that that's sort of happening automatically. So just to think about how, how we can use templates. What did you come up with for the hooks? What do you think about it? Really good. <laughs> you would use it? <laughs> uh, that one I would use because I'm not saying I, I, I agree with the hook, um, mm -hmm. but it really made me think about what I was saying. And ah. OK. It was like, you know, they concluded that what I was saying is that democracy is a farce. Um, but, and I certainly implied that, but I'm not sure I wanted that extreme a position. So it would make me modify what I was writing to have a more nuanced hook. Cool. Can it's funny because I Go think ahead, my original hook was more nuanced and the one it suggested <laughs> was less nuanced was more okay. or less straight to the point right but um, it'd be good 
students to see the difference and kind of, you know, what would the impact on the audience be? Yeah, with right. A or hook B. Mm -hmm. Let me just um, say hook C for a second, just so you know that this is possible. Hit templates again. Keep article hooks. Hopefully your article's in there and generate again. So, I'm sorry, Paul, say that again. Um, go back and hit templates. Mm -hmm. um, your article should still be there yes. in the text box. Then just go down and hit generate and it gives you a second version of the article. So you can do this. It eventually starts just repeating itself. but. So you can see that you can get various versions from here. This one sounds more like me, interesting, the number two. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm looking at the clock, but I do want to show, I want to try, I, I mean, I, here, I want to try a, a way out one for a second. No, not so way out. Let's say, and, and say the the loops ones are, are way out because they came right out of, out of PRL, but if you're not familiar with looping, I can get you're like doing three things at once here. But one of the things he suggests you could do when you're trying to write something is take your topic and have two or three people have a debate about it, right? Have them argue with each other. So I made a template like that. If you are just watching me, I'm doing it now. I then pull my text over into insert everything. So that's all my text. So this is debate about a topic and a text. So that's my text. Again, you can get that text from anywhere. I'm generating this. Mine is about running, sleep, and happiness. <laughs> um, Marina and I generated a uh, movie script about habits of mind last night. But, um, there we go. So we have John saying, I disagree. Physical activity brings happiness. Maria answers. John answers back. Then Paul jumps in. So it's created this dialogue. And the question is, does that help me as a writer? Does it give me some language? Does it help me think through different points of view? And notice also that the results are all still here, right? I can just oh, cool. click through and kind of think about things. I can also put them over into a notepad um, once you go off the browser, they disappear, just to say they're not going to be here forever. Um, so if you need any of them, you need to copy and paste them somewhere. How do you, um, how were you having the kids put them into the post itself? Chris, you were just having them copy and paste, right? Uh, yeah, I haven't, um, they were just using it to compare, um, and then, you know, I didn't get as far as did that. Did they revise based on that? Because it was kind of a tall order to do what we did in that one. No, no. But I think Christina was just asking, like, like how did they get it? The kids formatted them so nicely. Like, with these are one color, uh, these are another color. Was that just done within the editor? The the, the editor of these voices did that for them. Yeah, it was. Uh, <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> It was uh, just white. We're going to backward engineer that. <laughs> yeah. Got yeah. it. But Paul, it was, it, you used the, it, they used your, their kids' homepage and, and their post, right? As, as so so for, Chris's, for Chris's example, yeah. what he did was they, they found a website. They copied the website. I like right. copy all. They came to the text box here. Right. I'm doing, I'm doing it right now. Um, I, they inserted the text here. It gets rid of all right. the ads and all that. It just takes text. Right. And then and then they chose summary, TDLR, TLDR right. summarization. They generated that, and that's what gave them the summary. Now, probably, Chris, you didn't have them summarized twice. 
But if you have them summarized more than once, you'll see that the summaries are not always the same. Mm -hmm. So that's worth thinking about too. But I'm uh, the question I'm asking, Paul, is how the, how yes. does that come out on the front page of Youth Voices? Oh, okay. Oh, so then, I, then I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. copy this right here. And I'm gonna come over here, and I'm just gonna paste it. Okay. Right. Yeah. On my wall. No, I'm pasting it right at. Uh, if you're if you're still seeing me, I'm pasting I'm it right at the bottom. Oh, I'm pasting it right at the bottom of my document. The, the, okay. The, that I'm editing. Okay. And then I can just make a headline. And, you know. Okay. So I'm I move I toggle back to the document. That's right. Okay. It's right over there on the left side. Any editing you want to do is still there on the left side. And and sort of a policy pedagogical issue here. Um, like it's great to have the um, playground to mess around in and do whatever you want. But I think it's a really interesting message to kids to say, hey, there's your text, there's AI. You're like doing both of these things at the same time, right? So the fact that it AI comes up after you've started making something is interesting to me, at least, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to click on Dolly just so you know it's possible. Uh, Dolly E here. Um, and I'm going to say running running um, uh, happiness, running in happiness. If I close your sharing screen, how do I get back to it? Oh, you can open it near my, near my icon. I think there's a way to open the yeah. sharing screen. Is, is it? Good question. Let me see. Let me see. I'm going to look at find Oh. Here, I'll share. Maybe I'll share again. Sorry. Well, that? while you're doing the Dolly thing, though, I think it's um, that's an important point you just made because a lot of um, Angela, when she first came on, you know, you were saying I need to get in front of my kids because they're already using um, AI kind of as <laughs> about plagiarism. And I think that that thinking of like write it first, then use AI is a pretty important move. that I think is answers it, that, right? Is it back, Christina? Yeah. The sharing? It is, yeah, thank you. Okay, so I'm I'm generating running and happiness in the, you tell me the artist, in the style of who? Uh, let's see, Claude Monet. M-O-N-E-T? Yeah. yeah. Um, remember each a post. Oh, geez, <laughs> that's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the lily, my God. <laughs> um, so I can have I can choose, by the way, to add this to the text itself, just by hitting that. And it, oh, sorry, I hit the wrong. The thing. media library, yeah. That went to my media library, which I think we want to teach kids to do because then they can come back use this use another margin here and add a featured image which they have to do for their post and paul but, i would say when my kids were doing this a lot of them were like no 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 this image isn't what i was looking for at all and so they, they refined their writing mm -hmm. to get the image but i think that helped them think about the topic too yeah mm -hmm. yeah so you, you can also just add to the editor and notice it pops in Right where your cursor was. So you can add an image that way too. How do you get them to put it in their library? Uh, the, it's it's the other, it's the add to the media library. Okay. It's the other icon. And I published mine. Are they going to be able to read it again? Yeah. Are they going to know yeah. how to find it? What? Are they going to know how to find it again in their media library? Um, yeah. Yeah, they will. It's, it's not their media library, it's everybody's media library, okay. so eventually it gets hard to find. But, yeah, they should they should go pretty fast. So I'll, I'll just, again, sorry, very quickly. You go to settings up here, right? and then you go down and you find featured image, drag it off block, go to post. 
these are in the instructions up above by the way just say uh, and then and then you set featured image and the media library comes up and you choose that image okay gotcha there, there it is oh there's three of them you in the media. right i choose that image i set featured image probably a good idea to do it faster than later so it doesn't get lost so all right we're way over time here um should we keep going <laughs> no i don't mean tonight <laughs> i mean in general are we doing okay are we is this making sense um I, I there is a picnic table up above where i dropped some thoughts about some of the policy issues here i mentioned them already but if you're interested um, i guess i'd be curious because angela and i think kirsten yeah, let's hear from neither of you had messed around with it before was what are your thoughts um i mean i'm excited about it i think it's i think it's a really could be a really smart way to have students think about their own writing um i know my colleagues are very scared and some of them were a little frustrated when I told my students I use Grammarly. <laughs> this is like really gonna rock, you know, rock. <laughs> this, is, this is going to be like viewed as a, uh, you know. <laughs> Some black magic. Yeah. Black magic. Yeah, I haven't heard anybody talk about what you just described either. And I, I think it needs to get out there more. Like. Those of us who are like, oh, something new, let's play, right? Um, are in schools where the, like, not everybody is going to say that, right? So how this impacts on our colleagues is as important as what we personally think about it. Right? So anyway, I think that's interesting. How did they charge you for this, Paul? Um, well, there, just to know, there's like an $18 grant they give everybody at the beginning. Um, so they charge by, um, what are they called? Tokens. Um, tokens. They charge by tokens. And a token is not a phoneme, but it's like a phoneme. It's the smallest thing in a word that the computer can distinguish between words. Right. So it's not even a whole word. So school, but, dist school districts, if are going to go, I mean, that alone would mean they wouldn't want it because it would cost money, right? But everything costs money. They pay money yeah. for everything. Yeah. No, it's, they're going to have to have contracts. Right. Okay. I mean, Microsoft, you know, Marina's in a Microsoft community, right? So your, your school district pays a lot to Microsoft, right? Google, you know, they pay a lot to Google for all those Google things. <coughs> anyway, so somebody's, it's like I, I mentioned, it's a value proposition. Like, is this valuable or not? Gotcha. But, yeah. Um, Here's yeah. mine. Nice. Oh, cool. But I I think the error, the facts, errors, and lies are really funny. So, <laughs> so it's, it's entertaining, if nothing else. Mm -hmm. By the way, Peter doesn't have facts in his... I always did with kids. So. Just lies and uh, <laughs> he just says errors and lies. Errors and lies. But they won't know what that is until we say facts first. Yeah, yeah, it's true. <laughs> so I don't know. Anyway, so that's another principle that's on the picnic table. Like, can we start with compositional theory practices we do already and ask AI, can you do this too? Mm -hmm. Instead of saying, oh, there's AI, how does that impact our classroom? Mm -hmm. So. I want to kind of reverse that proposition. Right, and use like protocols and practices that. Mm -hmm. So another another one, <laughs> trying to be brief here, but another one is reverse outline, right? Where you take get the either the the main sentence or the summary or even the keywords from each paragraph. Um, you copy those down, and then you think about the whole structure. It does something different than Grammarly does. But I've been experimenting with my own writing using that, um, and there's a study based that wrote, sees four researchers in Germany have looked at 
they they created a model using GPT three, where immediately it gave them the summary, mm -hmm. and then the re, the writers looked at that summary and decided what to do in the next paragraph. So, anyway, so that's that's a process again where you're starting with a pedagogical principle, mm -hmm. and you're thinking about how the technology can support. Them. Mm -hmm. You know, Paul, what strikes me is that like. And this just came up today when I was looking at this curriculum that, you know, a lot of times people don't actually know how to teach writing, right? So it's like it gets assigned, but the, so part of this, part of what's cool about this is that like it can start to surface some of these ways of teaching writing and then, you know, it's like new tools. Yeah, who thought about reverse outlining before, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, and if you think about the big complaints, the first complaint that people have, you know, my kids will, won't write anything anymore. It's because they are given plagiarizable assignments. Yeah, they're not, it's not, yeah. <laughs> but, I, sorry, I, I, I want to, there's a positive proposition to also say, which is, and, and the, these four researchers make this argument, they say that the time it takes to write a summary of your paragraph takes you out of your writing and if AI can give you that summary you can stay in your writing faster and get back to it faster you can use the summary as like a reflective tool right like a yeah so whether or not that's true I don't know that's interesting. <laughs> but but it's at least worth asking can can we figure out how AI can like do some of our stuff better than we've done before right so yeah but it's our stuff. <laughs> so. Okay. I had a quick question just for Angela. Thoughts? Thanks. Um, I'm really sorry I didn't know about the word limiter. I would have pasted less of my uh, grad school discussion board post as my playground topic tonight. <laughs> um, you can go back and do that. But I did find it really funny on the, um, because I made a, we were reading about um, the history of the book, <clears throat> excuse me. And so I had just finished a meeting in which we were talking about, you know, the teaching of writing and gaming culture. And so then I read this article on the history of the book and I, and I, I went to Little Alchemy, um, which um, they said that um, in Little Alchemy, the uh, campfire plus human equals story and paper plus story equals book. And so when I ran it through the facts, errors, and lies, <laughs> um, it said that the uh, errors is campfire plus human equals fire, <laughs> and paper plus story equals paper. <laughs> and then for the lies, it said campfire plus human equals unicorn, and paper, paper <laughs> plus story equals rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm not entirely sure I understand how the facts, lies, and errors work because it made up stuff that wasn't even in my document. It's well, just this isn't an answer, but I when they don't always work, right? When they work, they put something in your head different than you had before. Okay. Right. They they it, they sort of break you out of your box. Yeah. I think. No, that was interesting to play with. I appreciate your templates. Cool. Um, all right. Um, keep playing out there. And um, and also, you know, feel free to play in here. <laughs> um, in youth voices, if you want. And uh, we'll keep going. All righty. See you all next week or sooner, if possible. Talk Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Good to see you again, Chris. Yeah. See you, Kristen. <laughs>